uh, be separated from their children, from their grandchildren, and from the country they have come to love. And part of the history of our movement and our fight for immigrants definitely is this win for deferred action. And I don't want anybody in this room, if there's one thing you know, that I want to make sure, actually two things that I want to make sure that, that you know. The first thing is that deferred action for childhood arrivals, DACA, didn't happen because some genius person came up with it. It happened because of us. It happened because of you. It happened because of the support that we had. And when I was in DC, going to those meetings, hearing from the administration, it cannot be done. Legally, it's not possible. And when I reached and knocked at the doors of all their different organizations in DC, the policy wonks that have been working for years on immigration reform, and everybody said, no, we can't do it. The elections, you know, we can't we can make the president lose the election. We can't, you know, force him to do this. And I said, oh, here we go again, knocking on the door again of Cheryl Little and saying, Cheryl, we need your help. We need to show the administration that they do have the power to do it, that they do have the power to uh, grant us relief. And on June 15, 2012, the administration made their announcement. I think a week or a week and a half before we already knew it, we were hearing the rumors and we couldn't believe it. But we did it. And we did it because in Miami, there is an organization called Americans for Immigrant Justice that has been fighting for immigrants for many years that have believed in us. And even though uh, I remember that day we were sitting in the office and Cheryl said, don't do it, don't walk. There was something <laughs> that in her don't do it, don't walk, it was like, you know what, but still if you do it, we're going to have every attorney there ready for you. You, you, know, you have all your packets ready. So she kind of gave us the green light. She might not say it, but she was kind of like her, her uh, advocate inside said, do it, do it, right? And I think that you know, the, the second thing that I want to say is that without the support of people, this is not going to be possible. The work that we've been doing now with Deferred Action, um, those clinics that we host where we have people like Juan Gomez and Tao uh, who come in at 7 in the morning for the lines of people waiting outside to staying until sometimes 8, 9 o'clock at night on a Saturday, giving up their whole entire Saturday. Who gives up their Saturday? Every single week, right? It's really hard, but they've been doing it because they believe and they know that every single time that they fill out an application for that young person, they are opening the world to that young person. They're opening the world of opportunities. And it's something that it's not going to be only for them, but for you for this community, and for the world as a whole. Thank you so much. You know, the reason we were able to get deferred action for Gabby's parents is what we argued was, and we put together a very long brief, uh, but for the fact that her parents were arrested because Gabby was outspoken about the need for things like the DREAM Act, her parents wouldn't have been arrested. They went after her parents simply because Gabby was brave enough to say, we need to change our immigration policies. And we were able to make a case in that. In fact, the judge who had uh, been involved in the case before actually said on the record, if you live in glass houses, don't throw stones or whatever the expression is. So, I mean, it was so outrageous. As I was preparing that brief, I got angrier and angrier. <laughs> and I thought, by George, they've got to do the right thing now. The, the third wonderful, wonderful student I'm going to introduce you to is Shamir Ali. Shamir came from Bangladesh at the age of seven. Uh, he went to uh, Palm Beach State College. Where he and he was forced to stop going to college again because of the high cost of out of state uh, out of state tuition. Um, and Shamir found himself arrested uh, by immigration a while back. And when I first uh, learned of Shamir, he was in immigration detention in Broward County. Um, and when I learned of his case, immigration had just denied 
uh, his request to be released. Um, and he was facing uh, imminent deportation. He's now working uh, at the Mercedes dealers in, California, in uh, Coral Gables. Um, but let me tell you something remarkable about Shamir. As bright as he is, as great as he can do in college, he's waiting to, to further his education until uh, he can pay uh, the regular tuition. But not long ago, he was in my office. He asked if he could drop by. I said, sure. And at the end of a very, you know, what, 10, 15 minute meeting, he left me a check and he folded it and he put it in the corner of my whatever. And I thought, you know, this is probably 25 or $50 and I can't take it. And I wasn't going to look at it, but I decided to open it. It was for $1,000. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and he refused. I kept saying, I'm not taking this. I'm not cashing this. No way, Jose. Once you make a million dollars, I'll be hitting you up. Don't worry about it. You know? But Shamir insisted. He said, it's important to me that you do this. And we did. And we are so very grateful. That's how remarkable Shamir is. Um, I want to say thank you, a special thank you to uh, Gabby and Carlos first, because I had, when uh, a friend of mine who goes to uh, UF told me that, look, you're undocumented, you need to message the Trail of Dream Walkers, and that's how I even got involved in the movement, that's how I know anybody, is I, I uh, sent them a, a message, and uh, Gabby responded uh, in uh, 2010 and got me connected and you know she's so busy and she has so many messages I mean even now I get a lot of messages and I don't even I try my best to respond to all of them but I know how hard it is so for her to single hand like you know single out my message uh, I would not be here for that too but uh, so basically just briefly um, I was detained uh, last year uh, actually like almost to the day I was detained October 19th last year I was working for a Brazilian company uh, renting uh, uh, luxury vehicles and I was undocumented and make a long story short the owner wasn't paying his taxes properly um, and when I was arrested it was it was it was uh, the scariest point of my life um, I like Cheryl was saying uh, my deferred action application was denied even though I qualified uh, they were not honoring the Morton memo they were not uh, I have I have no criminal record I mean I qualified for it uh, for everything, but they denied it. And if it wasn't for Cheryl, if it wasn't for Americans for Immigrant Justice, I, I, I definitely wouldn't be here right now. As in 24, 24 hours of Cheryl finding out, I was, I was released. Um, this woman has a lot of power. I, I, my hopes were, were almost gone. I mean, I was crying every night, and, and there every Monday they would uh, read off a list of names to be deported that night. It was very real. Um, I saw people, I didn't see them anymore. Um, you know, faces of people that I talk to on a, on a daily basis there. So it, I, mean, I was like pretty much next uh, in line. So uh, to me, you know, the reason I left that check and the reason I do anything for Americans for Immigrant Justice and also the movement is because, I mean, they really saved my life, you know. Um, if it wasn't for uh, students working for equal rights, you know, the Trail of Dreamwalkers, them introducing me, Americans for Immigrant Justice, I don't know what I, where I would be right now. I'm, I don't know how to speak the language. I'm from Bangladesh. I can't read or write Bangla. I've been here for uh, 18 years. Uh, my mom was deported uh, a couple of years ago, uh, driving without a license. I'm an only child. I stayed here. I don't have any family here, but I stayed here because I wouldn't survive there. You know, I, I, I honestly can't read or write the language, so I, I worked that odd job, uh, undocumented. I wasn't sure of my future. Um, I was hoping for the DREAM Act, and then one day, you know, it, it all came crashing down. So, I mean, what I have to just uh, say is that, you know, w with the work that the movement does, that AI Justice, that all of you, you guys, you know, are making a huge difference. You know, I am here because of that difference. I simply would not be here. Um, my, my mom, uh, she applied for political asylum. Her asylum was denied post 9-11. She tried to appeal many times, it just was not being accepted and we were uh, given an order of deportation. Um, my, my mom is a, a single mother, she was a single mother raising me. Uh, my father abandoned us a long time ago. 
and uh, for her to go back, she she does not have any any anything there. Uh, for a single mom to survive there without a husband is very difficult. But you know, uh, that pain was one of the 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 hardest. You know, I face it every day now. Obviously, I can't do anything about her right now. But uh, but I'm very thankful. I'm very, I'm very thankful because you know we 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 made a lot of changes. We made a lot of differences. You guys and everybody. With DACA, it's a huge thing. Uh, for me too. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm going to transition into it, and hopefully, Dream Act passes because this is just temporary. So, I mean, even though we're just waiting and, and seeing what's going to happen, it it's it's a little better than nothing. But the fight is still there. It's it's after two years, we don't know what's going to happen. So, uh, again, thank you everybody for your support. It like I said, it really means a lot, and that's the only reason I'm here. So, thank you. so many obstacles these kids did nothing wrong and everything right and the smart thing to do is make sure that they